and we are live. One second, the audio is not coming through right. Should be. Let me see why that's not. Yeah, I don't know why it's not coming through. I did this last time too. Uh, I have to redo that intro. Audio. Did I say that's coming through? It is? From you guys? It's coming through from me, but I don't think. Uh... I see. Okay, you guys talk again? Hang on, I think I should fix it. Test. Yeah, we're good now. Alright. Alright. We're gonna, we're gonna wind that one back Take a little two. bit. Right. Take two. Take two. Take we two. are live. Welcome, everyone, to this month's. Uh, Hack the Box Tampa Meetup. We had some technical difficulties, so if you saw us talking about the audio, that's why. Um, we have Nico here going over the uh, the box active. Nico, if you want to quick give a quick introduction about yourself, and then it's all yours. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, my name's uh, Nico. Um, I am. I have about four years of experience in cybersecurity. Um, I work in incident response uh, alongside Sam, and I really appreciate you guys uh, inviting me to uh, do the Hack the Box this month. Uh, we all go way back. We've been doing some hacking for, for a little while now, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to, to doing active this this month. So let's let's get after it. After it. Am I all good to go? Everything's yeah, good. Take it away. Right. Yeah, you're good to go. Uh, all righty. All righty. Um, so yeah, uh, the way I start out a box always, I'm gonna ping it, make sure that I have connection to it. So uh, the IP address of this machine is 10, 10, 10 100. Um, we can see, you know, I can uh, ping the box, good. Um, always like to look at TTL just to verify, hey, what is the operating system here? Uh, 127 indicates that this is Windows, so I know, okay, I chose the Windows box, I'm doing the right box, and it's just, it's just good to understand, you know, um, the difference between Linux, uh, if, if you're, you know, maybe looking, you're scanning a whole subnet, this just kind of gives you a quick indication, um, you know, what type of machine you're looking at. And also from a blue team perspective too, you know, if you're in your own environment, it, it's also good if you can't maybe get a host name, it, it's good to understand that as well. Um, so anyway, we we already did the NMAP scan here. You know, I, I did a, um, I, I did a TAC B TAC, which means, hey, I'm gonna scan all ports typically uh, that takes a while, um, but yeah, I just went ahead and did it because it's going to save us some time here. So we're going to cat it out and look at the Nmap results. Here, you know, I, I did see a, here, uh, um, looking through, we have DNS open, Kerberos, RPC, some LDAP. Um, this typically indicates to me without even looking at a host name, like, okay, um, we know it's Windows. This is this is likely a domain controller um, because we see you know it, a lot of uh, Windows hosts wouldn't have Kerberos open um, DNS. So th this kind of gives me you know this tells me ahead of time. Okay, what am I working with? This is what I'm looking at, um, and we can also see here if this will extend. We got a uh, domain name um, through LDAP. So the first thing that I always want to do um, is add that to my host file. So we are going to go over here, go to nano, let's see hosts. Um, and it's funny, I was actually just telling Nevin that yesterday. Um, I was working on another box called Rebound. Um, and this, this here is very important because you'll, you'll run into 
uh, if you're trying to communicate over LDAP, you'll, you'll run into some issues there. So always, 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 um, you know, make sure that you add uh, the host name along with the IP address to, to your host file. So you go 10, 10, 10 100. And then we are going to go active. Save it. Okay. Now, next steps that I like to do here, um, I like to go and I, I like to do an additional step. Um, you don't have to do this. Uh, I think it's good practice. It's good for your methodology if you're working towards OCP or any type of hacking certification. Um, I, I think this is good just for enumeration, enumeration kind of fingerprinting, uh, you know, the domain or what, whatever you're working towards. So. I like to use a tool called CrackMap. Um, we, I also just discussed with uh, Nevin that we, uh, there's a new tool called NetExec. So it's, it's kind of, CrackMap has been discontinued um, and NetExec is kind of like, they, they build on it um, further from CrackMap. So we can use that as well. We'll do 10, 10, 10, 10, uh, 10 I think, or 100, sorry. Okay, so this just gives me, this uh, will give me more information about the host. So we can see, hey, domain is DC. So we get a, we get a domain name uh, also from running SMB as well. Um, we could also see here, this is very important. Um, knowing all domain controllers now should have SMB signing enabled. But let's say you're in a domain, you see, hey, SMB signing is disabled for whatever reason. Uh, you can go ahead and use like, tools like NTLM Relay X, uh, stuff like that. So it's important to look at this stuff. Also SMB V1, uh, you know, this is uh, like a vulnerable, uh, SMB V1 is vulnerable to many different attacks. So just looking at the little things here can take you a long way. So I think it's very important to do this. It's, it's a step that I like to take. I've added it to my methodology like a year ago and you know, I, I'll never not do this now because it, it's helped me in the past. Um, so we can go ahead and go back to our host file. And I'm going to add the host name as well. So now we have DC active box. Okay. All right. Now, now that we got that out of the way, um, I, I personally, um, there's, there's three steps that I like to take when I'm looking at Active Directory. Um, and I've learned this from Hack the Box Academy. I think it's very, very good material. Um, if you want to learn about AD, the module in there is, it's fantastic. And it, it's given me this methodology that's kind of, you know, it, it's one of the reasons why I passed OSCP. Um, without it, I, I definitely would have struggled a lot. So um, I, I like to look for the low hanging fruit. So the first things I like to look at is, hey, is there like some sort of FTP share um, you know, that I can connect to anonymously is, or is there SMB? Um, so the first thing that I notice here is 445 is open. Um, and I didn't see FTP. So I, I would say the first step that I typically look at will be SMB. So we're going to go ahead and try to list the shares. Um, I love SMB client. It's my tool, um, that I've been using for a while. Everyone has their own personal preference, whether you like you know, SMB map, you like crack map, whatever you like to use, it's personal preference. I like SMB client, gets the job done. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this tool and, and list the shares. And I'm gonna do an anonymous. Um, it's important to know that too, because if if you can't connect anonymously, that means, hey, like I need creds. Um, so just getting this out of the way is very important. we can see now that, hey, we can uh, anonymously connect to SMB um, and we're going to list out all the shares. So now we're going to try to make a connection. And let's look at users. Let's say users typically, you know, if I can, if I can read it, um, this this kind of sticks out to me. If I'm doing a pen test, I see users. Oh, great. Let's see what I can do in there. Can't connect. So, all right, access denied. Um, 
and something that you know I've known for a while. It's like okay, if I'm looking at, at um, a lot of different shares like admin C, IPC, we know those are typically um, those are you know normal shares that would be on a Windows machine, um, net log on, sysfall. Um, however, replication is also it looks like that it's a share that's added. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to look at replication as well. And one thing I'd like to point out is, what am I doing here? Why am I going in SMB? That's the question, why? I want creds. Uh, credential hunting is like one of the main things that I do. I'm always gonna be creds, creds, creds. Um, live and die by it. I do that before trying to exploit any vulnerabilities, stuff like that. So always searching for creds. Um, so we can list it out. We see, hey, active .hack the box. That, um, you know, that kind of sticks out to me. So I'm gonna like further um, kind of dive into uh, this directory. Okay. So now that we're in here, um, this, this is like a, a little article. Uh, let's say you're having trouble, you don't really understand like, okay, like what are, what are some things that, um, why, why would I, where, what's a location that I could find creds for? And I came across a really good article. Um, I can, can you guys see that? Can you uh, like zoom in yep. a bit? Okay. Uh, so, you know, quick Google search, um, finding passwords in Sysfall, exploiting group policy preference. So this, this is just a little article that you can go through um, and say, hey, like, there are potentially creds inside of um, inside of Sysfall or inside of maybe this share, right? Um, so we can see that here, um, exploiting group policy preference is kind of what this is pointing me to. Like, okay, what is group policy preference? If I don't look at it, um, you know, if you're doing this box, I'm not going to go and explain it. But you know, you can you can read in here what it is, why you know why Microsoft putting it in, etc. But for me as a hacker, um, if I'm doing a pen test or whatever I'm doing, right, um, this is like, okay, there could potentially be some, some sort of uh, creds, creds in here. We're gonna go dig in. We're gonna look at policies. and we're just going to have to dig. Um, so we'll look at this one first. Is there anything in here that's going to stick out to me? Group policy. Okay. Let's, let's see what group policy has. And if I recall reading this article, it's going to be an XML file. So that's if there is a group policy preference, file in here, it's going to be in XML. So um, keep keep an eye out for that. I need to put it in quotes. Okay, so gp.ini, that's not what we're looking for. We'll go back a directory. Let's go to machine. References, groups, groups.xml, okay. And then we saw in that article, um, typically that this would be, so if I show, pull this over, if it's in the sysfall, so this, this looks like that this preference directory, it was copied over, right? So policies.xml, go into groups. Um, preferences, uh, it would be under policies, and then yeah, groups.xml. So let's pull back this file. So I like to use mgit. Yep. And we're gonna get out of here. Okay, so now that we got the file, Cat it out.
Alrighty. So looking at this file, we saw C password. So C password um, is also like a string that you could pull, you could theoretically uh, pull back all those files. Let's say, hey, you know, I know that this is uh, like group policy preference is vulnerable in SMB shares. If I really wanted to, um, I could pull back every single file and maybe use rgrep and then look for the string C password because it's going to have it's going to have the encrypted string in here as well. And we could also see in here, oh, we got a username. So, okay, I got the username service TGS, um, and then we got C password as well. So, let's create. Um, let me just do. Say, don't don't shame me if I use G edit. You know, that's my text editor. I like it. It gets the job done. Um, but we're just going to create uh, users.txt. And then we'll just do service. Anytime I get a, a username, I always like to add this to a file. Um, it's just good practice to do that. OK, so we got service TGS. And there is a tool. Um, we also Google it real quick. Uh, group policy preference. Rip. Okay. That's easy, right? So you can see here, hey, Kali Linux has a tool. Decrypt the given group policy preference string. Perfect. So we know the tool built into Kali, GPP decrypt. So we're going to go ahead and try that against a string. So, GPP encrypt, and then we're going to do groups. No, sorry, I'm going to put the string in there. And there it is, it decrypted. So, our password that we get there, we can echo. And it's in there. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and try that. Um, and we can we can go take a look back at our, our port scan, right? One thing I also like to do um, that I didn't mention earlier is what are my avenues, right? Where are my avenues for access? Uh, usually 5985-5986 is uh, WinRM. We 3389 for RDP. I typically look at those like, okay, here's here is my way in. Um, however, you can see here that there is no WinRM, there is no RDP, so what else could I do? Um, in Windows, Impacket has to be in your toolkit. Impacket is great, use Impacket. Um, and we see 445, I know from using Impacket so much, um, that we have a couple tools, uh, PS, psexec.py, smbexec, or wmiexec. However, I would stay away from psexec um, for OPSEC purposes. It, it writes to the admin share. Um, Defender picks up on it. I'm not entirely sure about SMB WMI. I would say I would use WMI exec before uh, psexec for uh, operational security purposes. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and try that. Let's also validate creds first, right? So we can use crack map. Or we'll even do better. We'll we'll give NetExec a new tool. I just I learned last night, so it's it's pretty much the same thing as Crack Map, but you know I, I need to get used to it. Um, so SMB that Q, and then it is service underscore TGS, I believe, and then password is CPP still standing 2018. And then, yeah, we'll just run it. Is that right? I need an IP address. <laughs> All right, so it worked. Um, 
we have access to that SMB. However, it didn't say pwned, right? So it's not a local, it's not a local account, not a local admin to this box. So like meaning that, hey, I can't do tac tac, I wanna go dump the SAM, right? Because I'm trying to dump local creds or hey, I can't dump LSA. So this might generate traffic or this is might generate alerts if you're in an environment. So don't go just spraying things, maybe OCP, sure. But if you're if you're on an environment that you know that you have blue team, um, I wouldn't go spraying this stuff. I'm sure if you're at that point that you're a pen tester, you, you know better than I do. Um, but I, I mean, this is, hey, I'm local admin. I want to laterally move from box one to box two. Maybe there's admin creds on here that are reused elsewhere. And then I can, you know, it, it's more of like pivoting purposes. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't go spraying that. So what can I do from here? Um, typically, once I get a user account, okay, what, what are my, what are my uh, avenues of attack? Or what am I gonna do from here? So we could, we could further, so we could further enumerate, say, tac tac users. Okay, so we got a list of users, you do tac tac groups. Just want to learn a little bit more more information um, about the domain, um, stuff like that, right? So now that we're here, I want to double check. When RM wasn't open, correct? I didn't see that. Yeah, okay. Just I'm like I was doing a box last night, and I'm like confusing ports back. Okay. We also. If I do tac tac shares, this is important. I'll tell you why this is important. Because again, how I went back and I said, hey, we what, what are my ways in with these credentials? So we don't have access to admin share. That means I can't use PS exec because I need to write, I need to write here. I don't have write permissions. So PS exec isn't going to work. Um, it, it, permissions are important when you get user accounts in, in a domain. So if you can't get on that, like you need a way to get on that box, right? You have creds, but you still can't get in. So even if I use WMI exec, exec.py, please ignore these creds and the IP address. If you plan on going in other boxes, not doing this box. Um, and then we get service. Yes. Password is GPP, still standing. Okay. Okay, and you see we have access tonight. So I pretty much don't have a way onto this box. I can't, I don't have RDP, I don't have one RM, I can't write the admin shares. Uh, RPC access denied, so I can't use SMB exec, you can't use WMI exec. So like, what do you do? You're like, okay, I have creds. What other avenues of attack? And this is when you need to understand um, additional vulnerabilities, right? But let's try, uh, this is something I didn't do um, whenever I, was, I first did this box, but let's try it. So let's do net exec. We're, we're, we're trying, we're, we're trying new stuff here. We're experimenting LDAP. So I want to use Bloodhound here. Um, and you have creds, so you should be able to use Bloodhound. And we'll do attack aid. So we got LDAP. I highly suggest, you know, I saw EPSEC using this tool. I highly suggest um, downloading that exec, um, making a transition from crack map as it's no longer supported. Okay, so here with LDAP, we can see that this tool actually supports using Bloodhound instead of having to go download bloodhound.py. Um, let's see if it, it complies with me. So we'll do tac tac bloodhound, and then we'll do format collection type is all. Here's all the collection methods it's going to do, and that doesn't work. Eh. 
fun. Maybe I don't have permission. Looks like a dependency error. What was it? Uh, Dino's timed out. DC active, active. Okay, that's right. I wonder if the general tool will work. Um, Can you, do you mind scrolling to the top for the Bloodhound errors? Because it's feeling I resolve it up high. Uh, dependent connection. We'll call in proto flag. Scroll down. Do one night. I mean, it, it looks like it's. I don't think LDAP's open. Because it's erring on a dependent service that it's looking for. I, I think LDAP should be open. Uh, 389. Let's see, Earth no. is, uh... there. Yeah, this tool is giving me issues using Bloodhound. I mean, I could probably specify like ACL and it, it might work, right? Oh, you know there what? You there you, you go. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. That's... Hold on. Oh. Bells okay. are starting to ring, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So you point it to the name server and then it can actually collect the data. Yeah. Uh, it should be all. Maybe. It might work. It might give me. There, you, there you go. There you go. Could we do LDAP by deploying the collection methods for all? It still could give me errors, but we'll we'll see. Oh, it worked. Oh, all right. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Love it. All right. So. Where'd it go to? Where'd it? Uh, not here. Okay. Copy. So we'll copy that, paste, and then we'll just write it to this directory. Cool. Um, now we'll probably have to do a new terminal. We'll juice it up a little bit. I gotta do Neo port J dark and Bloodhound. Where are you at? Okay. Okay. All right. So we we'll give a little Bloodhound demo here. Uh, Bloodhound's great. I recommend it. Um, and this is very, very helpful when you're in a situation. Hey, where do I go? I have creds. What can I do with it? Um, so it makes your life easier. Not that it it can't. It's not going to find everything. There, there's going to be stuff out there that you can do that Bloodhound's not going to find. But, you know, it holds your hand. So if you have help, take it. Where is that? Oh. Where are you? Box active, and here it is. Okay. So let's look at this. So we can here in analysis we can. Um, this kind of gives you shortest paths is typically what I like to look at. So, um, shortest path to domain admins, um, is kind of what I like to look at here. Okay. The administrator is a part of domain admins. Um, what else do we have here? DC, DC sync, not really much. Um, we can also put uh, service .tgs as well. No. Can I just search that? I just wanted to show me users. I forget the way to basically pull up the user, and make say, hey, I pwned him. Uh, search for the user. 
Yeah. Let's see CTGS click on it, and then go. It might be already displayed. Uh, yeah, it should. Down. Scroll down, Nico. I, I think it might be displayed on the graph already. No. Let's see if you can find the user. Maybe I'll just say administrator here. Okay. That's point of rebound. Uh, user groups. I don't know. Analysis. Uh, hit the run arrow underneath, which is SDC. See the one on the click that? Yeah, something's not working because when I search that, it should it should pull that up. Anyway, um, we'll we'll just we're getting sidetracked here, so um, we'll we'll keep going through. So okay, uh, we didn't we looked at shortest path to domain admins. Not really anything valuable. Um, you know, I I like to look at maybe hey Azure up roasting Kerber roasting. So we're we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that. So look at list all Kerber roastable accounts. Okay, let's, I don't know why these are on here, but we can see that uh, administrator is Kerberostable. Uh, Kerber um, so what is, what is Kerberostine? Um, Kerberostine is basically uh, a attack that will, it will target a SPN. Um, so maybe a, a user account is um, running a service um, and I have valid cred. So in order to do a curve roasting attack, I need to have valid domain credentials. Um, and basically what I'm doing is, hey, I'm requesting that service ticket, but that service ticket is encrypted with the password hash of the, um, the user account. So my goal is, hey, let, let's try to, and I knowing that this is curve roastable, let me try to get this uh, ticket, this TGS, and let me try to take it offline and, and crack it. So we know that, hey, we got, and we have KRB TGT, um, which is the uh, Kerber, Kerberos account, but it, we, we typically want to do this. So let's look at shortest path to here. Okay. Doesn't really give me much. What else can we look at? Set is ending node. Will that, will that run? No. Interesting, but we know he's Kerberosable. So let's go back and um, let, let's go ahead and try to, we, we have valid credentials. Um, so, hey, I know that I can do Kerberosting. Well, what is what is the tool? And I, I wish I wish that this box would allow me to do, um, you know, WMI exec, I would have had a share to get onto the box and uh, you know, show enumeration from Windows as well. However, I can't do that because I can't get on the box with with the user. That would kind of be an after the fact, um, after after you know we have compromised them. But anyway, uh, so we're going to use Impacket. What what is the Impacket tool? Uh, it's get user SPNs. Um, please ignore that command. SPN.py, and then we are going to do IBC host, I think it's 10, 10, 10. I always mess up these commands, so just bear with me. And no matter how many times I do it, it's just, I will mess it up. Um, and then we will do tag you, and we can say we got service TGS. And then pack E. That's his password. Paste. Um, also, too, again, uh, like I mentioned, the Hackbox Academy, very good walkthrough on how to do Kerber Osteen from Windows. Explains it very well um, how to do it from Linux. Um, this tool is great. Uh, Impact is great. But, but yeah, I, I recommend if you do plan on doing that box. Um, you do have Academy, definitely look at it. It's great. Um, still look at it all the time. I did it like a year and a half ago and I still refer to the cheat sheet I got from it. So, um, worth every penny. And let's see what else we're going to do tack request because we are trying to request a TGS. And I told you, okay. Unrecognized argument. It need to be in quotes. 
It doesn't like to pee. Um, it's Maybe I'll just take out the password. Uh, isn't the... I think I need to add target domain, too. Isn't get user SDN... Uh, okay. It's that weird format. Let me find it. Yeah, I, I could, you know, look at WADCOMs and <laughs> just get it, but I like to put myself through pain. <laughs> <laughs> that works, too. The more you like pain, the more you, you'll enjoy Hack the Box. Yeah. It's going to be a PS exec format, Nico. Mm, that's right. So it's like... It's going to be uh, get users STN domain slash user colon password. Uh, so active... Uh, HTTP slash, slash user service yes uh, colon just, password. And just take up the. And then was it at the IP, right? Yeah. Just also take out the attack you at the end. Yep. Um, I I don't know if you you have it specifying DC host for the IP. All right, we'll try this. Uh, it might and be then... it. It should be DC IP though instead of DC host. Okay. And there, and then that should request the ticket. There you go. There you go. Kerberos did. Um, one thing too, I like to point out, um, I would also refer to Google for this, but delegation, uh, you know, there's, there's three types of delegation. You have unconstrained, constrained, resource-based, constrained delegation. I highly suggest reading about those, understanding what they are, um, and what, what you can, how you can use Rubyus or how you can use Mimikatz to, you know, or whatever in packet type of tool. Um, I would say looking at the pro labs, if you are interested in those, um, the pro labs do go into that stuff. You will do those attacks. They are very relevant. Um, but anyway, just something like to mention, I've had struggles in the past and I like to bring them up. Okay. So now we got the ticket. Um, so we cover us, we got the TGS. We can also redo and do output file is service. Yes, as well. And that should break that. A cat service. All right. So now we got the ticket. Um, we want to take this offline and crack it. So what I'm going to do, I run. I like Hashcat over John the Ripper. Again, it's personal preference. Um, I run it on bare metal, so I I'm going to take this to. I'm going to take this file and put it on my host, and then I'm going to crack it. Um, so let me get this pulled up real quick. And we are going to no. folder box active and then the main tabs. I'm just gonna drag this to my host here. Okay. Go. One second, guys. getting this onto my cracking directory and then we're good to go. Okay. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yep, you're good to go. Uh, can you make the terminal a little bigger? Yes. Uh, I don't know if it likes that. I always forget the Windows one. Let me find the hotkey shift. for it. I don't know if it's shaky. Uh, shift keys. Windows.
is it alt enter very question no, 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 no that's too expensive uh let's see layout change this here you might not be able to do it it looks like you have to mess with unless i'm over some uh, overlooking something i might be like messing with the config for it Your size, font, how about that? There you go. Is that better? Awesome. Yep, much better. Okay. So we are going to use, I already have Hashcat in here. Like I said, I love Hashcat. It's my best friend. Hashcat exe. And then we need to specify a the command for Kerberos theme. That's Kerberos. I think it's 1300. Ah, here we go. 13,100. And 13,100. And then we're specifying the file that we want to crack. So service TGS. And then using the the rock you file and there we go you see here we successfully cracked um, the DGS and we got the password Ticketmaster 1968 cool so let's go put this back out here peace you know, sir, and to passwords by text make sure it's in there I keep pressing cat catter and I did that and I removed the other password anyway it doesn't matter we don't we have that um, okay so now we have the administrator Password, let's try WMI exec. Administrator. Admin. So I spelled it wrong. Hey, there we go. Um, who am I? Administrator. And let's go to directory. We're in the C drive. Let's go to users. Administrator. Desktop. And there you have it. There's your root flag. We could have earlier, one thing I, I didn't mention earlier, we could have um, listed out the user's directory and get the user's flag. However, um, I don't think that step's necessary because we our goal here was, hey, let's Let's see what we can do with this user. So we got root. Now we're on the box and we can get whatever we want. So um, there, that's active. Um, thank you guys so much. I, I had a great time and yeah. I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah. We have, uh, yeah. we don't have any upcoming, there's no upcoming CTS, right? Not that I'm aware of. Um, I haven't seen anything. If there is, we can sort of release an update about it. Yeah. Um, but just again, thank you, Nikki, for coming on on a Sunday. Um, nothing beats a little curb thing on a Sunday. Yeah, nothing like it, right? Um, no, nothing at all. Yeah, and curb roasting too, it's it's very relevant. Very relevant attack. I think everyone should know how to do it. Um, very common AD technique, and yeah, I love showcasing it. Yeah.
I, I, it definitely would be better if they, if there was a box that you could do it from Windows. Um, I think the, also be, I, I think I could have used the Windows box at, to, to showcase it, but yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, probably better OPSEC as well, going it from Windows machine. Maybe, maybe not using set SPN, but um, like other power, like PowerShell manually enumerated and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a fun thing about OPSEC though, is because you can get so granular into avoiding like typical mistakes. For like, for example, um, Mimi Cats, if you try and pass or generate a golden ticket, will I think Mimi Cats in general, I might be mistaken. For any TGT, it generates the uh, the ticket lifetime is ten years, and I think Windows default ten hours. So again, if you want to try and pick up someone running that in your environment, it's just setting the sort of hey, if a ticket automatically comes in with the uh, ticket lifetime greater than the default that's set for the environment sort of raise a red flag that hey why is this user requesting this ticket for this long um, so there's way, there's ways that OPSEC is good and bad um, yeah. good OPSEC is always great but it's also as a defender you can sort of understand how attacks work what to look for and then build sort of detections in your environment to prevent them from happening in the future um, but that's that's the fun thing about it though there's always there's yeah. always more stuff to learn what do you guys think would I have been knacked by now would I have made it to Kerberos <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> yeah, you never know. I think yeah. I think my OPSEC was already starting out, but you know now uh, by the time I you know you you run Bloodhound, that's gonna generate all the L, the LDAP traffic. Your, your I think you're gone after like two thing. minutes after Bloodhound. I think you're gone. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I ran Who Am I, and that was it. Yeah. I only la I only lasted you know thirty seconds, but we got it. You in. got what you you got what you needed. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in. We'll uh, see you next month.